Wow. Hit zero. See if you can get the person. Just keep it. Well, I know you're not supposed to be on the phone right now. Oh. See, look, I can take her phone. I wasn't talking I'm going to steal the phone. Right. Take it. All right. Um, how do we do with this? Some of you had almost all of it. Some of you had uh, forgotten it. So problem one, two, and three, are we okay finding slope? Yes. Is anybody stuck on finding slope? Any one of those need to be? You know, if you get zero on top, it's a zero. If it's zero on bottom, it's undefined. What do you got? Number one. All right. So the slope equation is this. And they gave us 2 comma 3, 4 comma 7. That's supposed to be a parenthesis, sorry. So label it x1, y1, x2, y2. And then plug it in. So we got 7 minus 3, 4 minus 2, 7 minus 3 is 4 over 2. We get slope of 2. So what about 1 over 2? Then you flip flop it. You flip your x's over to the y's over. Find the slope of a line through each pair of coordinate points. So that's all we have to do. All right, uh, up through number seven, still for each, write the graph of the line, slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b. This is where it crosses the y intercept. This is your slope. I did that mean the same. So four through seven, any of those that you want to take a look at? Yeah? Six? So number six. Where does it cross the y-intercept? Zero comma what? Zero comma zero. Everyone agree? Now we're going to look to see if we can find a couple of points that we know. It looks like I can go from that negative two, three. So if I count up one, two, three, I'm counting up three, and then I'm going right two. So three over two is our slope. So we plug into y equals mx plus b. This is your b value. This is your slope. your equation. Anything else up through number seven? Yeah. Five. So where does it cross the y-intercept on number five? Zero comma what? One. And then slope, I got to figure out. So let's find two points. So let's count up. One, two, three, four. I'm counting up four. And I'm going right three. I have a slope of four over three. So I use y equals mx plus b. So I have that. I have that. So we have y equals four thirds x plus one. Yeah. Okay, so slope, you're counting the vertical direction first. So if I went from negative two over three to back to zero, zero, I would count up three. From negative 2 over 3, and then right 2. If you were to count from 0, 0 backwards, you'd go left, or you'd go down 3, which is negative, left 2, which is negative, and negative over negative is positive. All right. Make sense? Anything else up to number 7? What about uh, 8 through 13? 8 through 13. For each linear, identify the slope and the y intercept. Yeah. 13. Okay, so they have number 13. It's set up in standard form, meaning you have x and y on one side and a constant on the other. So I want to make this y equals mx plus b. So I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. So I get negative y equals negative 4x plus 3. And then I need to change that. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. So I get y equals positive 4x minus 3. So my y-intercept, my b value is 0, comma, negative 3, and my slope is going to be 4 or 4 over 1. Anything else up to number 13 on your homework? Uh, just up to 13. Yeah, go ahead. 9? Number 9, we have y equals 4 over 3 minus x. So let's put this as y equals mx plus b. So I'm just going to rearrange it. So from there, that's my slope. My slope is negative 1. And my y-intercept, my b value, is 0, comma, 4 over 3.
Anything else up to number 13? Let's go to the back page, number 99. Okay, those who want you to write the equation of the line in its slope intercept form given the following. So any questions on 14 through 25? 17. Okay, problem number 17. They gave you the function at 1 is equal to negative 1, or function at 0 is equal to negative 1, and the function at 2 is equal to negative 1. Okay? So you have to realize that this yields me the point 0, comma, negative 1. And then this yields me the point uh, 2, comma, negative 1. So let's find the slope first. So here's my slope equation. Again, this is going to go to, you have to know it, uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. I'm going to get y. I want to use y equals mx plus b. I want to start solving that. So my slope, I'm going to get uh, negative 1 minus negative 1 over 2 minus 0. So this is positive, so I get 0 over 2. So I get a slope of 0. So if I plug 0 in right here, that means uh, this whole thing becomes 0. So y is equal to b. So my only y value up there, notice it says y equals. This is a y value, this is a y value. So my equation is y equals negative 1. It's a horizontal line. It goes through negative 1. The slope of the horizontal line is 0. What else we got on that back page? 18. Yep. All right, so I'll hit 18 first. Negative, is that negative 2.5 comma 2? Okay. So I'm going to label this x1, y1, this x2, y2. Everyone still set with that? Yeah. I'm going to find my slope first. Y1, x2 minus x1. So I'm going to get 2 minus minus 3. Negative 2.5 minus 0. So this is going to be plus plus. That's 5 over negative 2.5. If I reduce this, how many times does 2.5 go into 5? Four. So I get a slope of negative 2. Okay. Is that right so far? Anything stuck on that? All right. So then I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to pick one of the x, y values and plug it in. So my y value is negative 3. My slope I found was negative 2. My x value is 0 plus b. So what does this come out to right here? Negative 3 is equal to b. So I know my slope and I know my y-intercept. There's my equation. Anyone you said? Twenty-one. Slope is undefined, and it goes through the point four comma negative six. So think about what four comma negative six looks like. That is one two three four one two three four five and six. So is that okay for negative four, or four negative six as far as the point? Yeah. Okay. An undefined slope means it's got to be a vertical line. Vertical lines are x equals. The only x value I have is that. So x equals 4 is the vertical line. You don't need the graph, but x equals 4 is right. So it's one of the special cases. What else do we have on that back side? Yeah? 23. So it goes through negative 5, 6. And you have a slope of 0. So a slope of 0 means it's a horizontal line, right? So if I were to use y equals mx plus b, I could easily say that's an x and that's a y value. So I can go 6 equals 0 comes in there. So 0 times x plus b. So 6 equals, oh, wait, 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 that's not x. <coughs> so that's my b value. My slope is already that. So y equals 0, x plus 6. 0 times x is 0. So y equals 6. That's a horizontal line. And you know the slope is 0 there. What else from... Yeah? 25, yeah. All right. All 
All right, quick question. Zero comma three is a point. Yes. What point is it right now? It is, but what special point is it? Think about it. zero comma three. It doesn't go right or left at all, and it's right here. Oh, it's up. The what? It's the y-intercept, right? Yeah. So that's my b value. So that's my b value right there. So now I just need to plug in my slope and my b value to this equation. So I know my slope was given. Twenty-four. Yes, please. I have function at six equals two, or negative two, excuse me, and the function at zero is equal to negative five. Okay, so you have to realize how do you make this a point? That's the point six comma two. Six comma negative. Negative two. Thank you. And how do I make that a point? Zero and negative five. Zero. Zero. Right. Um. What point is this? Y. Y intercept. That's your B value, right? Because it's right here. Okay, so it's your B value. So let's figure out our slope first. And then we have our B value already there. So x1, y1, x2, y2. And so I get uh, negative 5 minus negative 2, 0 minus 6. Doing the arithmetic, that's a positive, so that's going to be negative 3 over negative 6. That's negative over negative, it's positive, so I have a slope of half. And I already know the b, in, or the b value, right? Because I had my y-intercept given. Uh -huh. so y equals mx plus b. Plug in your m that you just found. Plug in your b, which we did in the beginning. y equals 1 half x minus 5. Twenty-two, four, zero, zero, negative seven. Okay, so this is an x-intercept. Do we looking for the x-intercept at all in this problem? No, but this is the y-intercept. So I know my b value right away. So let's find the slope. So that's x1, y1, x2, y2. Negative 7 minus 0, 0 minus 4, uh, negative 7 over negative 4. It's got to be 7 over 4 for a slope, right? That's my m. I knew my y-intercept already. So that's negative 7. So plug into y equals mx plus b. So y equals 7 over 4 is my slope, x. Uh, and my b value is minus 7. Guys and girls, your slope does not include the x. It's just a fraction or the number that precedes the x. So don't please don't don't list the x value as your part of your slope. Twenty. Which one? Twenty. 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 You gave us a slope of negative one, and we have a point nine comma four. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. This is an x value. And this is a y value. I just put the ones there. Uh, and then I have a slope, so this goes here. So I'm going to get 4 equals negative 1 times x plus b. So 4 equals negative 9 plus b. So my b value has to be equal to 13. I already know the slope, so I can plug the slope in the y-intercept in right there. So I get y equals negative x, or negative 1x, plus 13. And that's it. You? 17 again? We have zero comma negative one, and two comma negative one. So we find that you slope have a slope of zero, so the equation is y equals negative one. It's a horizontal line. We good? Yes. Yeah. So is five over zero undefined? Five over zero is undefined, so it means it's a vertical line, so it's x equals. Yeah. Eighteen? Nineteen.
right, we already have the slope, so I'm going to use this equation. Call that an x, call that a y value. Let's solve for b. Let's cancel, so 4 equals 2 plus b. So b equals 2. We already know the slope, so we can use our y equals mx plus b. So I have y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. All right, make sure your name's on them and pass them on forward, please. Zoom in. When we doing this? Uh, I have pre quarter on today. Tomorrow? Or third Wednesday? Fourth period before we go on break, okay? It's already a weird day. I'll take it. Today is Monday. Tomorrow we have a testing day, right? Yes. So, where do we find where we test now? There's all kinds of posters that are in the hallways. So find your poster, find your name, tells you what room you're in. So we're gonna be in that room all day. No, till like noon, till eleven. Oh yay! Can we get out of the Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. yeah, or eleven twenty or something. Oh, yeah. Buses. Okay. One forty-five. So they have to accommodate kids for extra time as well. So I think a lot of kids are done early. It is out. So what kids weren't attended that have to stay at home? So kids, some kids, they need a little bit more time processing. So they give them extra time. Time and a half. I can't do that. Well, this is for the pre-ACT, which the ACT is a awesome test for college. So this kind of gives you a... An introduction to it, let you take a look at, you know, okay, I see it. I wish you didn't have to take all these. Well, these are the good tests. These are the good ones. The state ones. Wait, so have mom call you in off the ad all day long. These are the good ones. I wish you didn't have to do them. I wish it was just based on the grade. No, I know. The unfortunate thing is, there are some schools out there that kids earn A's in, and they really shouldn't be. I've taught it. I've taught at schools that are inner city schools that are that the administration will go in and change grades to higher letter grades. So you don't want to base this off grades because that means that it kids are getting A's in other schools that didn't earn it. I agree. I've taught at a school where the administration told us to change grades, and we said flat out no. You want them to change, you change them yourself, but I'm not going to go change them. I'm not going to compromise. Uh, it's unfortunate. Why did they want you to change them? Like, I made mean, them look better. Why? Wait, but why does it matter? That's so weird. It's not like they're like. So, so, society doesn't look like look at it that way. Society looks at school as raise my child. You know, sometimes, sometimes society looks at it as. My kid didn't learn, so it's the school's fault. And it's like, one, you never read your kid when they were a child. You never played with your kid. It, it's unbelievable. That's a bad parent right there. Oh, well, I understand. I'm just telling you that there's an awful lot of kids that are out there that don't have some of the things that you guys have. They, did not, they don't have good parents. I've been in parent-teacher conferences that have said, look, my kid was a mistake. They know they're a mistake, and they should never have been born. And you're just looking at it going, you're like, your kid's 15. So, oh I've had parents tell me that, yeah. Like not here. Liars. Not here at other schools. Like, don't tell me that. No, I mean, seriously, that's, there's some really cruddy parents out in the world. I mean, when it comes down to it, anybody, 
Anybody can have kids, but you need a license to go fishing, you need a license to go hunt, you need a license to drive, like anyone can have kids. And there are some people, I have some people, seen people in my career that it's like, wow, why did you choose to have kids? There's a license to go hunt then. Well, I'm just saying. You don't need a license to go have kids. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to just run. That's something with China. She's going to get a baby so she can just have one child. No, I won't. But now they just change the two. Population. Change it to two. Yeah, there, there's all kinds of bad things. All right. People are so mean. Why can't they just live in a world where everybody is known? Wouldn't it be a different world if every child was a wanted child? Yes, and that'd be good for them. I understand. I'm with you. So, so what would happen if you had three children? Jesus. I know. Probably, it's probably a tax, much higher tax, like a 50% tax rate. No, What? All right. Starting, starting. We'll solve society's woes later. All right, now I'm just teaching you how to think. So, for every input, we have an output. That is a function. For every input, we have one output. For every x value, we have one y value. So for every x value, we have one y value. For every input, we have an output. Input goes with x, output goes with y. So in every other words, for every x value, you have one y value. Okay. So again, this is talking about a function. We've talked about functions where the vertical line test, if you have a picture and you have a vertical line, and it, it touch, your vertical line touches your picture twice, it's not a function. Okay, all relations are functions. A relation is an x, y value. Okay, it's a point. You create points off of it. But not all combinations of x, y values, if you plot them together and graph them, make a function. Okay, so input, output. Input is an x. Y, output is a y. Okay, so functional notation. This means the same thing as y. It's just a fancy way of writing y. So this is basically y equals 3x minus 5. So if I want to find a function at 2, that means I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to start plugging in like this. So this comes out to 1. So this yields me the point 2 comma 1. What do you think I do with this 0? What do I do with this 0 right here? Yeah, I'm going to go 3 times 0 minus 5. 0 minus 5 is a negative 5. So this yields me the point 0, negative 5. What do I do with this? Plug it in. So I get 3 times negative 1 minus 5. That's negative 3 minus 5. Gives me negative 8. That yields me the point negative 1, comma, negative 8. Does this one look different? Yeah, so what this means is I'm, I know that the function at x is equal to 10, so I'm going to plug in right here. So I get 10 equals 3x minus 5. Then I want to solve for x in this case. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides, divide by 3. 15 over 3 is 5, I believe. So look what, how this point is. This is the point 5 comma 10. So the answer was already in y component. So when you have functional notation, if you have function at a number, function at a number, function at a number, you plug that number in to get an output. <coughs> Bless you. Sometimes you might have the function at x is equal to 10. So that's now saying that's what the function at x is equal to. This is also what the function at x is equal to. So function at x here, function at x here. This one happens to be equal to 3x minus 5. This happens to be equal to 10. Set them equal to each other and solve for x. We all right so far? May I move to the next slide? All right. So, come on, baby. Is that the next one? Okay, so we want to do this kind of a real world application. And of course, we create a story problem. This is just a fictional account of something, but we're trying to represent it mathematically. And we're talking about this person named Lexi who had her car towed when it broke down. It cost her $3 per mile to get a towed plus a flat fee of $50, meaning the person shows up with a tow truck, you're already paying 50 bucks just for them to show up, and they're going to charge you 
$3 per mile. The function for her cost, we're going to use C at M rather than F at X. But this is just functional notation right here. Okay, is equal to 3M plus 50, meaning for every mile the car has to be driven on this tow truck, you're paying three bucks. Plus, you paid the initial $50 on there. This function calculates the cost per mile that the co is tarred, towed. Determine P at 12 and interpret what this means in the context of the problem. So this is actually, that should have been a C. I apologize, they made an error. So we want C at 12. So C at 12 is equal to 3 times 12 plus 50. So that's 36 plus 50. That's equal to $86. Okay? So if you were to tell me what this means in the context of the problem, this means that Lexi needed to have, needed to pay $86 to have her car towed 12 miles. Say that one more time. Context of this problem says that Lexi needs to pay $86 to have her car towed 12 miles. So it broke down 12 miles from the service station what she went to go at. She had to pay her original $50 fee plus $3 a mile. So once the tow truck driver got to the location, dropped the car off, gave her a bill, you owe me $86. If Lexi doesn't pay, then that's Lexi's problem. It says determine the output of the function when the input is 100. Interpret both the output and the input in the context of this problem. Okay, so what was the input, the x or the y? X. So I'm going to go, I want to know what C at 100 would be. So I'm going to go 3 times 100 plus 50. So that should come out to 300 plus 50. That's 350, right? So what does the 100 mean? That means Lexi needed to have her car towed 100 miles. And then Lexi had to pay $350 once the car was there. Yeah, there's a... Well, yeah, and then she'd have to pay to get it fixed as well. So, paying for the convenience of somebody picking it up. I don't know, you ever, you ever drive down the highway and you see cars, they have like that fancy looking green or orange sticker on them? Tow truck companies just drive around and love picking those up. They take them over the impound lot. you got to pay some dear money to get your car out. If your car doesn't get picked up after a certain amount of time, they send it to auction and they auction off your car. Doesn't it cost like more to, no, cost less to take it right when they tow it than to get it from the lot? Oh, yeah. It's going to cost more to get it off the lot. Off the lot because they charge you, right they, the not only do they charge you the towing fee, but they charge you the daily rate. Like the rental space. So like let's say that this parking lot was a, a lot to bring cars to. If your car sat there for ten days, you have to pay that for whatever the ten day so that pay like two fifty to get it off the car and yep. you get it from the lot within two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there's all kind of, I tell you, tow tow truck industry, man, that's a lot of money making industry. And uh I can do it for you. Yeah, babe. I tell you that you know, you don't really pay much attention to tow trucks until you really need one, and you're like, man, I'm broken down. This is horrible. You know, that check engine light comes on, and, you know, smoke and steam are coming from out from under your hood. It's not a good thing, but you're thankful when you get these guys. Okay? May I move on? Does everyone understand how we're doing these in the context of the problem? So we're creating a fictitious event, and we're trying to give a story about it. Okay? So Lexi had her car towed when it broke down. It cost her $3 per mile to get it towed, plus a flat rate of 50. The function for her cost was, okay? So interpret the y-intercept in the context of this problem. So let me change this. What did I say this is usually equal to? Y. So let me ask you all this. What is my b value in this problem? If I add y equals mx plus b. 50, so 0, comma, 50. That's the y-intercept. What does the y-intercept mean in the context of this problem? Well, what does this mean? Yeah, like somebody pulls up to you 
with that tow truck. Hey, tow truck people, I need a tow. They pull up to you. The guys say, you need a tow? Yeah, okay, it's $50 up front. Boom, here's a $50 bill. He'll put it on the truck. He'll drive it to wherever you get to. And then he'll say, okay, now you owe me $3 per mile. <laughs> well, I'll probably, the rates are usually posted on the side of the truck. Usually the fractional amount. It's like on taxis and stuff, man. You can't. It's like, okay, it's a buck fifty for the first quarter mile and or if I go to the airport, three dollars additional per person. Uh how much would it cost us to go to the airport? Twenty six bucks. Here you go, just take it. Yeah. So what if you don't have a beat on the Yep. You what's that? What if you don't have fifty dollars extra up front? Then they tow it to their impound bot. Impound lot, so your car sits on a lot, and then once you get your fifty dollars, you can get your car out of the impound lot. And it's like fifty minutes yeah, and and the lot, yeah, yeah, it comes to a silly amount. So anytime you see those cars parked on the side of the road, like a lot of times you can go up to the mountain, just see that orange tag. They try and put it. In. Those are stickers. They are not nice stickers to get off, man. They put it on the side of your window. You're gonna spend about thirty minutes getting that sticker off. It it's like it, it adheres like cement. Huh? I tell, I mean that stuff. It's nasty. It, I mean that stuff. You got one of those stickers. Yeah, it breaks up the car. Because my car box was not come I don't know what a pop socket. Is. Okay, it's like. Does anybody have a pop socket? Okay. Like, like, gotcha. Like, like, and you put the goopy gun on there. Yeah. Good. I'm glad. I am. I'm with you. No, Goopy Gun is better. Goopy Gun is better. All right. Just in case you don't have the Goopy Gun, it takes a while to get it off. All right. Interpret. So does everyone feel okay with how we interpreted the y-intercept in the context of this problem? So now they want us to interpret the slope in the context of this problem. So what does our slope mean? This is our slope right here. It's a 3. What does our slope mean in the context of this problem? Yeah, you're paying. You pay three dollars for every one mile towed. Okay. What happens if you don't go a full mile? I'm pretty sure that the company has it figured out, saying it's a it's this much for up to the first mile. Up to the second, up to the third. Yeah, but it only took me 3.3 miles. That means you pay for four miles. No. I'm just telling you, that's how they'd operate it. All right. What do you think? So, learning this stuff in the context of the problem. Okay, again, we're still talking about old Lexi. This poor Lexi, she needs a better car. But it says the turn of the number of miles her car was towed if she was charged. $400. So Lexi has dropped 400 bucks. So do you think the 400 goes under the pink or does it go under the into the green? So she paid 400 bucks. Think about this. Her cost was $400. Okay. Tow truck guy comes. She's not paying attention to stuff. He drives a certain distance. Says, okay, that's 400 bucks, lady. So, do we know how many miles she drove? We'd have to put it in. Could be. So, this 400 is going to go into right here. So, 400 is equal to 3m plus 50. So, now we're going to figure out how many miles they had to drive. So, I'm going to subtract 50 from both sides. Is that all right? And then divide your side by 3. Anyone got a calculator they can? 150. Comes out to 150? No. What? No. 350 by 3. 350 by 3 is 1.3. 116.16666667. So she. 116.16666667. So. Old Lexi had this car towed for 116.6666 miles, or 116 and two-thirds of a mile. Wow. 
A customer claims that they were overcharged for their service. They were charged $149 for being towed 33 miles. Were they overcharged? So we could do this one of two ways. I could go 149 equals 3M plus 50, or I could go C at 33 is equal to 3 times 33 plus 50. Yeah, 149. Okay, they said they paid 149 bucks, so we have to see. Let's see if these work. So that's 99 plus 50, that's $149. This is correct. This person was not overcharged. Okay, sometimes that towing rate's a lot more money. You're paying for the convenience to have your automobile moved. Sometimes that convenience costs a lot more than you think. Yeah, you, your car gets impounded, you pay for it. Even if it wasn't It doesn't matter. And that's something that you go after in legal stuff, but it is what it is. Um, years ago, I got in an accident. I rear-ended a guy. This is when I was in college. And uh, I rear-ended a guy. My car caught on fire. I was fine. I get out of the car. Cars on fire. I'm in the back seat. I'm getting my physics and my engineering and my math books out. And they're like, What are you doing? Your car's on fire. I'm like, Dude, I'm an engineering student. This stuff can't burn. Everything else can burn, but I couldn't let my. But they, my car was totaled. So I had to pay the impound fee and all of that. It came out of insurance. The insurance does a lot of nice stuff for you. That's why you pay for it. You pay for it in hopes not to use it. When you have to use it, it is nice that you have to use it. You know, Except you got to pay, you got to pay for the car, you got to pay, so for the car, but then they're probably going to take parts from that car and use it for the pocket, Absolutely. All right, moving on. All right. All right, so hang on. The input's the x value, the output's the y value. So use the function y equals 3x plus 4 to complete the input-output table. So if this, if this was an output right here, this was an output right here. Where does that go in on this equation? In for x or in for y? Y. y. So I get 13 equals negative 3x plus 4. How do I solve this? Before that? I mean, subtract 4. Subtract 4. And then divide by negative 3, yes? Divide by negative 3. What's 9 divided by negative 3? 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. All right, is this an x or a y value? That's an x, so I have y equals negative 3 times negative 4 plus 4, so that's 12 plus 4, which is? 16. 16, good. And then this last one, is this an x or a y value? Y. Y value, yes. I'm going to plug it in just like on this one. Oops. All right, how do I solve this? What do I have to do? Subtract 4, so that's what? Negative 18 equals negative 3x. So what's x equal to? 6. 6. Oh. <laughs> good try. Okay, so guys and girls, this is a linear equation. If I were to graph these points, they would fall into a straight line. But I said the other day, how many points do you need to define a straight line? Three. Two. Two lines defined. This is just gives you an extra point. Okay, almost done, right? Almost done. All right. Oh, good. We got a new thing. Bennett and his friends go bowling. The cost for a group is 15 for shoe rentals plus $4 per game. Oh, Bennett's going to go bowling. So you got to pay for your bowling shoes. What, are, what do, you, do you have to pay for bowling shoes if you already have your own? No. But you still have to pay 4 bucks a game. How much will it cost for them to bowl two games? So think about this. So it's going to cost $15. How much is each game? $4. $4. So they want to bowl two games. How much? Eight. Eight. So how much do they pay? Eight. How much do they pay for the two games? $23. 23 bucks. Do we have to get $23? Well, if you don't have them, yes, they require them. Wear your socks. <laughs> nope, they don't want you to wear them. They'll come over and say, you need to have bowling shoes. So it's a money they have. It is. And then you get to wear someone else's shoes for a couple of hours. But don't worry, there's an effective spray they spray in each pair of shoes. That's what my owner, I wonder if that's what it works. Who knows? 
You know, you get some fungus infection. All right. Write a function related to the cost of the outing to go bowling. Okay? So how much is it per game? $4 per game, right? How much are you going to pay for your shoes? $15. 15 Do you have to pay $15 each game for your shoes? No. No, you rented your shoes, $15. Bucks. So Y equals 4G plus 15. Okay? So the more games that you bowl, the less your shoes actually cost per game because you're, you know, if you bowl one game, you're paying the highest amount. All right? Almost done. Graph the equation. What was our equation? Y equals what? Four. Okay. So let's, uh, let's graph this. Let's make these zero, three, six, nine. Okay, and I, I did this in, by that, so here. Now it's going to cost me $4 per game, so my slope is up 4, right, 1. So that's not the same. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is what my graph looks like. Use the graph to estimate the number of games a group could bowl for $30. Okay? So how much? If I, bowl, if I bowl 30 games, I have this. Okay, so I paid 30 bucks, but this is my equation that goes with it. So what should I do to get x by itself? Subtract 15. Subtract 15. So I get 15 equals 4x. So it appears this uh, these guys bowled three and three quarter games. They made it to three whole games and ended up frame seven. Right? Or seven of ten frames. I just lost. Good for you. I lost. You lost. What'd you lose? That's okay. But it's okay it's because not. I bought a stripe one time. We're proud of you. And I only knocked down like three pins and then all of them. All right. Page 100 through 102. You have plenty to do on that. There's, It's kind of spread out. That's not a lot of problems. It's only like 21 problems, but you can do it pretty quickly. This will be due Wednesday. That will be due on Wednesday. Thank you, Wednesday, because tomorrow we have our testing day. Okay? Tomorrow, sleep in tomorrow. How much they just have us